is nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Thanks for joining us. I am Hawa Salihu Adama. The judiciary is our starting point today. Justice Taiwo Obayomi Taiwo of the Federal High Court in Abuja has granted the Directorate of State Services, DSIS, 45 days for the detention of the leader of the Revolution Noun Group, Omoyele Showare, pending the completion of the investigation for trial. Justice Taiwo gave the ruling after studying the ex parte application and video evidence of the DSS. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewu reports that Showare was not brought to the court since it was not yet time for arraignment. Although Amoyele Showare is yet to be formally charged before the court, the application for his detention was brought by the DSS under the Terrorism Prevention Act, giving little room for the exercise of personal liberty, as Section 27, Subsection 1 of the Terrorism Act subsumes personal liberty under national security. Even with the application being ex parte, Justice Taiwo Taiwo did some balancing act by taking judicial notice of laws and court judgments which could stand for the respondent. But in the words of the court, personal liberty must be in accordance to the law. Justice Taiwo Taiwo also said that in the face of the video exhibits attached to the application by the DSS and the provisions of Section 27, Subsection 1 of the Terrorism Prevention Act, he was inclined to grant the application at least to an extent. The video exhibits are clips of Omoyele Showore along with Inam Dekanu of the proscribed IPOB, and the second being a collaboration with the proscribed Islamic movement of Nigeria, all of which the DSS told the court were processes to bring down the government. The court therefore granted the DSS 45 days to detain Showore in order to complete investigation and report back to the court on the 24th of September. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NTA News. And the presidency says Nigeria's economy is growing significantly contrary to claims by the opposition PDP alleging that the economy is in danger. In a statement, senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garbashehu presented facts side by side to prove economic growth under the Buhari administration. The details. Nigeria's economy came out from recession with the confidence investors have when President Buhari came with his economic revival mission in 2015. This, the presidency explained, made domestic and foreign direct investments flow steadily. For instance, the presidency noted growth of capital importation, which rises to 216%, equivalent to more than $7.14 billion this year. Records indicate that economic growth in the first and second quarter 2015 better than how it was in 2014. Similarly, United Africa Company of Nigeria's profit went higher with 61% from January to June this year. The fact which presidency referred to publications available on national dailies. It further stated that in the last four years, President Buhari met diplomatic shuttling to improve economic relations with the U.S., Europe and China, in addition to devoting 30% of capital spending for infrastructure development. Evidence manifest in the statement added include projects being executed in rail, roads, aviation and power generation, which now has the capacity to generate 13,000 megawatt. To security now, the Nigerian Army and the headquarters of the Nigerian Police Force are to constitute a joint committee that will investigate the circumstances that led to the exchange of fire among officers on duty. A statement by Colonel Segir Musa, Acting Director, Army Public Relations, says the panel will be headed by the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of Criminal Investigations Department. While giving the account of what led to the incident, Colonel Segir Musa said, Nigerian army troops, while responding to a distress call to rescue a kidnapped victim, exchanged fire with the suspected kidnapper, kidnappers along Ibi Wukari Road in Taraba State. 
The refusal of the suspected kidnappers to stop at the three checkpoints prompted a hot pursuit of the fleeing suspect by the troops. It was in this process that the suspected kidnappers, who were obviously armed, opened fire at the troops, prompting them to return fire. In the resultant firefight, four suspects were killed on the spot, while four others sustained various degrees of injury, with two others reportedly missing. It was only after this avoidable outcome that one of the wounded suspects disclosed the fact that they were indeed policemen dispatched from the Nigerian police force headquarters in Abuja for a covert assignment. Colonel Sagir Musa described the incident as unfortunate and could have been avoided through proper coordination and liaison. And the Inspector General of Police has devised a strategic plan to deploy special force to fight criminal elements in the southwest zone. The Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operations, Abdul Majid Ali, announced this while on a visit to the Ondo State Governor in Akure. Wasiu Rauf completes the report. The prevalence of criminal engagements by some men of the underworld, which have been hindering the needed growth in the land, necessitated the tour of the state command by the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operations, Abdul Majid Ali, on the orders of Inspector General of Police, to share information with officers and men of the force on our best to cope criminality, especially in the southwest region. And so, say we we'll apply it to the southwest. We are sending the, the strong team here that will work with all the commissioner of police and ensure that there is security and there is peace. People sleep with their two eyes closed and move freely. The host commissioner of police, Amba Asugo, and the AIG Zone 11 Oshobo, who accompanied the DIG, corroborated efforts of the police management in place of what if role being the eyes of the public to ensure that crime is reduced to the barest minimum in the country. In Adwekiti, Kola Adebobuyi, Antinus. Now, paying the supreme price is not a tax for many. It takes bravery and courage. One can only imagine the plight of widows of fallen heroes, of course, with the challenges of meeting daily needs. To meet some of these needs, the Ndubisi Nzenwafo Foundation reached out to the Military Widows Association in Nigeria. Ruth Aguele tells us more. This is not the usual August women meeting. These are widows of the Nigerian Armed Forces who paid the supreme price and will always be remembered for their selflessness and loyalty to their motherland. But such strength does not apply for their widows who are left behind to cater for their children alone. Felicia Monday is a young widow with a 10-month-old baby. She shares her challenges been a widow for a year now. He had an accident and I was three months pregnant. It has not been easy for me because I'm not the next of kin. Unlike Felicia, Elizabeth John has counted 19 years as a widow since her husband died during service. To bring Suka to them, the Indobisi Nzewa 4 Foundation donated 500 bags of rice to the Military Widows Association and the women could not contain their joy. For us, we are entirely, eternally grateful to him. We can't really express because I'm running short of words. 500 bags of rice is not a joke, help, especially during this solar period. I would uh, tell Nigerians that they should remember us because our husbands died in the course of protecting Nigeria. I think it's our social responsibility to go extra mile to do one or two things. It may not be big, it doesn't matter how small it is. Gestures like this, the organizers believe, should not stop here but should be replicated by other citizens because our armed forces will continue to protect the territorial integrity of the country at the expense of their lives. In Abuja, Ruth Aguela, NT News. If the growing threat of flooding in the Federal Capital Territory is to be mitigated, there must be considered efforts to return the city to its original plan by addressing human activities Stakeholders made this submission at a one-day emergency retreat organized by the FCT Emergency Management Agency on flood 
Mitigation and Response Coordination. Ilyasu Onutu Yakubu reports. In the last few years, flooding has wreaked havoc around parts of the FCT and its resultant effect amounts to loss of lives and property. The most recent is last Friday's incident, which claimed the life of a director in the FCT High Court with a greater threat of further recurrence as alerted by flood forecast agencies. One of the emergent issues surrounding this recurrent disaster is the contingency plan, mitigation, and response coordination. FEMA stakeholders retreat, therefore, is conceived to chart a way forward by injecting new ideas on coping effectively and reducing flood disaster to the barest minimum in and around the federal capital territory. Nigeria is already aware of it and uh, definitely we will get everything together and uh, make our representation to the committee. The reason for this meeting is to call them and sensitize it all the stakeholders in case there is need for activation of such plan. The Director General of Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency, Clemens Nze, in a presentation on flood outlook in the FCT for 2019, told response agencies to be on their guard as the outlook for the year present pictures of improbable flooding. In a 15-point communique, the retreat submitted that there is urgent need for proper flood mapping as well as removal of properties on flood plains. Ilyasu Onotu Yakubu, NTA News. And the federal government, through the Ecological Fund Office, has reiterated its determination to improve quality of life of the people across the country. Thus, the permanent secretary of the fund presented at a pre project sensitization of the proposed Marabam Gurku IDP Camp Access Road. Let's now join Abdullahi Ajia for the details. The Mararaba Asogurku Road in Karu local government area of Nasarawa State remains important in the socio-economic life of the people. And for many years, the road has been a nightmare for residents and motorists who ply the road on a daily basis. Now, the good news from the federal government is the construction of an 8 kilometers road with culverts in two sections from Aso Junction to Guruku Junction and linking it to the Guruku IDP camp with 12 months completion period as approved by the Federal Executive Council. Government embarked on addressing low critical ecological challenges across the country to foster environmental degradation, loss of lives and properties. It is therefore imperative that peace and tranquility are needed. In line with the new commitment of community sensitization before embarking on any project, Ecological Fund Office brought the people up to speed on government's intention and the need for the people to give the contractor maximum cooperation towards the delivery of quality and timely projects. With this what has happened today, it has revealed that difficulties concerning Gurku Maraba Gurku Road shall be history. Business and other commercial activities will improve and life will change for better. Representatives of different groups gave their word to own the project by providing support to the construction work that they described as not only timely but necessary to their survival and well-being. Abdullahi Ajia, NTA News. And this is Nationwide. We are live on the network service of the NTA. Time to take some messages, more reports when we return. And event management are special skills which can only be acquired through training and experience. NTA TV College Joss is organizing a special two-week course on protocol, event management, and public relations to upgrade the capacities of practitioners. The course will equip participants with modern skills, techniques, and international best practices in protocol, event management, and public relations. Also, a special four-week intensive course on non-linear editing techniques will run concurrently. The course will expose participants to modern techniques and technologies of non-linear editing. Take advantage of this course to hone your professional skills for premium packaging of your programs and reports. The venue for both courses is the serene and secure 
Environment of MTA Television College, near Old Government House, Rayfield, George, Plateau State. Date 19th to 30th August 2019 for the course on Protocol, Event Management, and Public Relations. 19th August to 13th September 2019 for basic non-linear editing techniques. Course fee, 100,000 Naira only per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more information, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, JAWS. Training you to be the best you want to be. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. These days, people get their news and information for more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Thanks for rejoining us. And with the Idol Kabir celebrations only a few days away, Elizabeth Yila Lamidu brings us a survey of demand and supply in the livestock market in Kano. Idol Kabir. The season of sacrifice is here again, when Muslims all over the world demonstrate absolute faith and submission to Allah, love for one another and others around them. It does not only mark the climax of Hajj, the fifth pillar of Islam, but also commemorates Prophet Ibrahim's readiness to sacrifice his son Ishmael. Ahead of the Eid al-Kabir celebrations, livestock markets in Kano are loaded with animals of varied types and sizes. Visit to some markets within the metropolis revealed that though the animals are available in large quantity, but sellers are complaining of low patronage. Some customers at Ofarna Isa and Gorondusi markets had different opinions on the prices. The prices are high, but not too high, but based on the situation of the country. Uh, the price is too much. The price is very cheap compared to last year. It's too cost. It's, too, it's much expensive than the last year. At Gorondus and Market, the acting chairman Livestock Farmers Association, Kano, Bashir Sulet Anzoho, who has been in the business for over two decades, spoke on the market situation. The market is different compared to last year. As this year, we have more customers coming in. A medium-sized ram at the market is sold for 35,000 naira, while big rams are sold at 50,000 naira and above. Medium cow is sold at 80,000 naira and big cows from 130,000. Medium-sized camels go for 60,000 naira, while big camels start from 180,000 naira. As the Idol Kabil draws closer, livestock sellers are hopeful that the market picks up some more. 
while buyers pray for a decline in the prices of the animals. In Kano, Elizabeth Ilanamido, NT News. And towards reducing the rate of unemployment in the country, more unemployed graduates have been trained in farming in Jiga states. Ibrahim Belogunda reports that starter bags were also distributed to the first batch of the beneficiaries. Dama Graduate Unemployed Youth and Women's Support is an initiative of the federal government and World Bank for Dama Additional Financing Tree, in line with the federal government's agricultural promotion policy, the Green Alternative. The youth and women were selected and trained on various agricultural enterprises to become self-employed and employers of labor with starter packs of 480,000 Naira to 360,000 Naira. What I will uh, advise them is to continuously cooperate with the State Padama Coordination Office as we are doing our best to ensure they are successful in this uh, Padama Guys program. Beneficiaries of the poultry and ruminant fattening promise to judiciously utilize the opportunity and boost the development of agricultural sector of the state. Take care of the chicks. They have given me 100 chicks and 16 bags of feed. I've been trained on uh, small ruminants, how to rear small ruminants like goats and sheep, so, so that you can have some you know, benefit from it. The exercise will be monitored by facilitators and inspectors for continued advice while other beneficiaries engage in rice production and processing, mess production, fishery and crop processing have gone far in the implementation process. In Duse, Ibrahim Berlogunda, NTA News. And still staying with the agriculture sector, the United Nations agencies, including the Food and Agriculture Organization, as well as the International Labor Organization, have donated farming equipment to federal and state governments. The joint UN-sponsored program under the Food Africa Project will facilitate the establishment of an agro-processing center in Kaduna. Musa Baba Aliu completes the report. These are farmers from Kagaruko local government area of Kaduna State undergoing training in all aspects of crop production. Apart from the training, the farmers will be supported with farm input and implements that will enhance their productivity. 78 lead farmers, market agents and processors, of which 44 were women, were empowered to this project. 45 women groups and farmer associations have been encouraged to register their cooperatives and given the training to do so. Capacity building training has been conducted for beneficiaries along the horticulture, value chain, business development, and cooperative management on value addition and market linkages. At this ceremony, the Kaduna State Deputy Governor received the tools for onward distribution to farmers. This is for us a welcome development and it will be of great help to our farmers since it will serve the dual purpose of helping to overcome the challenges of post-harvest losses, but most importantly, to provide access to markets. Tasi Ugarbatinau and Rhoda David were among the 230 benefiting farmers. They are optimistic that the implement and the knowledge acquired will assist boost their output year on year. In Kaduna, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Cross River State's Industrial Park has been described as one of the ventures that will boost the country's economy and provide job opportunities. This was when the former governor, Donald Duke, visited the park. Umar Basi Edet reports. Former Governor Donald Duke is one of the latest callers at the Ayade Industrial Park, which plays host to several factories, including the rice seeds and seedlings, garment factory, pharmaceutical company, noodles production plant. Former Governor Duke noted that with the state's lean financial resources, Governor Ayade must be performing some financial magic. He, however, advocated the privatization of the industries to ensure sustainability. We shouldn't be shy of privatization. The important thing is that it is in our state. We are the direct beneficiaries, right? And more importantly, it is working. You don't want to own it for the sake of owning it, and it's not working. Governor Ben Ayede said the goodwill exhibited by the former governor was a call to do more. He knows the income of the state. 
He knows the challenges of the state. He knows that our income cannot add up to do these factories I have done. The Cross River State Government has already commenced the sale of its right seedlings with some states as beneficiaries. In Calabar, Umo, Basilid, NTA News. A conference to discuss the suspended Ruga settlement policy of the federal government has been planned by a group that believes in dialogue as means of resolving differences. The group is seeking partnership with the Nigerian Television Authority to bring all those concerned to a round table. Ruth Aguele takes it from here. Ruga's settlement by the federal government earlier planned to settle migrant pastoral families and to curb open grazing of animals across the country is the reason this group is visiting NTA. They are seeking partnership to use dialogue as a key strategy to further sustain the Ruga settlement through a proposed Ruga conference that will bring together stakeholders to discuss the challenges of the Ruga program and address grey areas. There is a need to bring together stakeholders under one platform to discuss. Let them tell us what is their grievances towards this. There's going to be a rule of engagement for the headers when they come into a community. It's clearly an economic issue. The Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, represented by the Executive Director of News, Mohammed Labo, acknowledged the group's choice of dialogue to pursue their interest in the proposed Ruga policy. It's unfortunate that the whole policy of government, which of course aims at um, resolving the conflicts that we are having in the country today, resulting to loss of uh, lives, you know, government wants to address it once and for all for the benefit of uh, everybody. Cattle rearing, being part of the value chain of um, agriculture, you know, should not be left out. If farmers can be supported by government, why wouldn't government support the cattle rearers? It is the belief of both parties here that dialogue between all concerned parties will be key to resolving differences on the issue. In Abuja, Ruth Aguela, NT News. The World Bank is encouraging states in Nigeria to own projects domiciled in their territory and improve transparency to enable victims benefit from more of its programs. Country director of the bank at the first portfolio award ceremony said the institution will remain resilient until sustained development in all aspects of the socio-economic environment of Nigeria is achieved. Things I found upon taking office as governor of Kaduna State uh, about four years ago was that most governors don't know what's going on as far as World Bank finance projects are concerned. Uh, the project teams tend to manage, micromanage the projects at the level of the Ministry of Finance and the liaise with the World Bank to take decisions. The governors are completely in the dark. So often you find large amounts of money uh, sitting idle that can be used for the benefit of the state that the governors are not aware of. This is the kind of awareness the World Bank is trying to create in Nigeria through this newly introduced performance award. 11 billion US dollars is the current value of the bank's commitment across sectors in Nigeria, the largest in any African state with room for more. The World Bank and the Federal Ministry of Finance have been streamlining activities in line with the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan ERGP to broaden the people-oriented portfolio that seeks to improve social sectors such as health and education, wealth creation, human capital development and economic development are also vital areas in this relationship. The states have to learn from each other. And that's what we would like to create, this space where the states can learn from each other and a solution exists to a problem in another state. So that kind of peer learning is very critical. 23% disbursement seems low. But coming from a very low base, this is a good achievement and I believe we can do better. Taking the World Bank's activities a notch higher, it is awarding states that have shown commitment to the formulation and execution of policies in line with its mandate of poverty reduction. We are doing all our best to see that the little resources we are getting from the federation account and the other sources from the 
development partners are harnessed in order to bring our people out of the object poverty we are currently in. Consensus here is that there is still a long way to go in ending extreme poverty and promoting shared prosperity. Hence the need for more commitment and proactiveness. In Abuja, Leah Katun Baba Tune, NTA News. And it's now time to join Dotun in our Lagos Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Good afternoon to you. You run. Thank you, Hawa. Good afternoon and welcome to Lagos. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arraigned former INEC chairman Professor Maurice Iwu before Justice Chuka Obiozo, Federal High Court in Lagos, bordering on a four count charge of money laundering, fraud, and unlawful acts while in office. Abalawe Obara also reports on the six defendants accused of crude oil theft before the court. Professor Maurice Iwu appeared before Justice Chuka Obiozo for bail application and plea on the offence allegedly committed between December 2014 and 27 March 2015 in Nigeria. The suspect was accused of alleged fraud with a sum of 1 billion 203 million naira with his company, Bow Resources Institute of Nigeria Limited's account, domiciled in the United Bank for Africa PLC. The accused person pleaded not guilty of the four count charge. Due to the outcome of the plea of the defendant, the prosecution counsel, Rotimi Oedipo, requested for an adjournment date for trial and for him to be able to file the counter affidavit on the case. The defense counsel, Ahmed Raji, SAN, told the court that since the case is a bail offense, the court should grant a bail application for Professor Maurice Iwu, who is said has been in custody since Monday, 5th of August 2019. Rosimi Oyedepo, however, told the court that there is a lot of facts known to the commission why Professor Maurice Iwu should not be granted bail, as the first arraignment is just the first phase of the case. While listening to the two counsels, Justice Ubiozo ruled that the suspects be remanded at the EFCC custody and adjourned for the hearing till 9th of August 2019. Meanwhile, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, also arraigned six suspects, including a naval officer, accused of quid oil theft before Justice Chuka Obiozo on two-count charge. The defense counsel, Boyega Oyewole filed a bail application and requested for the approval. The prosecution counsel, however, asked for more time to be able to file the counter affidavit. Justice Chuka Obiozo adjourned the case till the 16th of August 2019 in Lagos, Abolore Obara, NT News. Breast milk is essential for the growth and development of a child, most especially the first breast milk produced by the mother, which is called colostrum, because of the antibodies content. This is why there is an accelerated campaign across the globe for exclusive breastfeeding. Hindenujan Adams tells us more on the importance of exclusive breastfeeding. The physical closeness and eye contact between five months, three weeks old baby Ethan Hassan and his mother translates to this connection and an evidence of exclusive breastfeeding. For you to get that natural, that real content, the baby has to latch on for like close to 40 minutes to an hour. To have more children enjoy the numerous benefits of exclusive breastfeeding, UNICEF and the World Health Organization are advocating family-friendly policies that support breastfeeding. The campaign is strong as studies by both organizations revealed that Improving breastfeeding rates around the world could save the lives of more than 820,000 children under five, as well as prevent 20,000 maternal deaths from breast cancer annually. It gives the baby that absolutely indescribable sense of immunity against all infective diseases. The benefits to the mother are that it helps the, with the return of the uterus to its natural size and position. The very first um, milk that comes out, uh, what we call colostrum, is a very uh, important uh, uh, feed for the baby. It gives uh, antibodies, apart from nutrition, it, it fortifies the baby. If UNICEF and the World Health Organization's clamor for creating positive environment for breastfeeding is achieved, more children will enjoy the magical power physiologically and psychologically. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. 
And that's our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues after this commercial break. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News. Instagram at NTA Network. Twitter at NTA News Now. YouTube at NTA News Online or visit www.nta.ng For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop or iPad or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. With heavy hearts but total submission to the will of God Almighty, we announce the passing on to glory of our beloved brother, husband, father, uncle, cousin, and nephew, Akin Loye, Olushegun Joseph Oyebanji, who slept in the Lord on July 27, 2019. Burial arrangements, service of songs on August 8 at NTA Arena, NTA headquarters at 4 p.m. This will be followed by a Christian wake on August 15 at Akin Loye's residence, Kionigmi, a sin local government area of Kwara State, at 5 p.m. Funeral service and Thanksgiving hold on August 16 at All Saints Anglican Church. Okionigbe at 10 a.m. before interment at the church spirit ground at Okionigbe in Kwara State. Rest in peace, Akinloye Oyebanji. Signed, Olubumi Oyebanji for the family. Thanks for staying. To health matters now. Five medical doctors with the Rigasa General Hospital in the Gabi local government area of Kaduna State are to face disciplinary action for absenteeism. Deputy Governor Hadiza Balarabi gave the directive during an unscheduled visit to the hospital. Muhammad Umar Ajingi completes the report. Complaints about the poor sanitary condition of the hospital prompted the unscheduled visit by the Deputy Governor. On getting there, she discovered that not only that the environment was unkempt, Enough a number of patients, including those on emergency and admission, were left untreated, while the medical doctors on call were absent from duty. The deputy governor demanded an explanation. Uh, patients are already in the hospital, some requiring admission, some requiring, you know, uh, samples to be taken. And uh, unfortunately, there's uh, no doctor available as at uh, past nine and up to this time, now to ten. They're still not, you know, in the hospital. I think this kind of uh, behavior is, is not acceptable. As soon as possible, we're going to put things on ground to make sure that there's a change. The deputy governor immediately directed that disciplinary action be taken against the five doctors who were not at their duty posts. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umar Ajingi, NTNS. And as part of efforts to ensure improved health care delivery in Oyo State, Governor Shei Makinde has reaffirmed his commitment towards sustaining achievements recorded in the state on polio. He made a promise while receiving the Rotary International in Ibadan, Oyo State. Lukman Hassan reports. 
did to ensure that Nigeria is safe from polio after the last case recorded in 2016, Rotary International presented sensitization materials to Oyo State Ministry of Health to enlighten Nigerians on the need to immunize their children against polio virus. Although Oyo State has not had any reported case of the virus in the last 10 years, Rotary International calls for collaborative efforts with state government to prevent possible spread from surrounding states. And we want to make sure that as a new government settles in, that the polio education program is on their top agenda. Then as at when due to health centers to have their routine immunization as it will be stated to them for the different vaccinations. Oyo State Governor Sheima Kide, while noting that health care remains top on his administration's agenda, promised to do the needful at ensuring that the state is polio free. I give you the assurance that the leadership of uh, your state uh, were committed to polio education. And we're also committed not just uh, you know, uh, uh, to that single uh, uh, disease. Rotary International has created Nigeria National Polio Plus Committee to ensure that the country is safe from polio in Ibadan. Lokman Hassan, NTA News. And still seen with health matters, with the recent worrisome dimension of cases of suicide or attempts in tertiary institutions across the country, guests on Good Morning Nigeria have stressed the need for the establishment of psychotherapy and dedicated counseling institutions to tackle the growing trend. Daniel Adirie reports. Influence, social media, and societal pressure have been highlighted as some factors that lead young persons to attempt or commit suicide, an issue that has raised concerns. A student must be matured to a particular age before entering the university. But these days, you find students who 15 years on campus, 16 years on campus, they have not, you know, been matured enough to be able to cope with the challenges of being alone out of their homes, out of their families, out of their immediate environment, in a completely new environment. Another issue is this isolation. Yes, social media is partly responsible. Because the way you bring up your child at home really counts. If your child has been isolated at home, not having parental care, uh, you leave your child with nannies all the time, when, she, when he or she gets to her institution, that is already there. For others, they called for close monitoring of students, especially their social engagements, as this, they believe, will help in addressing incidents of suicide. What we are noticing now among the young population is that there is an increase in their vulnerability and a decrease in their resilience, their ability to overcome and respond to challenges. And part of that is the socialization process. The fact that the family institution is becoming weak is disintegrating. Suicide ideation that sets in between that time and the actual completion of suicide cycle, when the individual takes his life, there is an intervening period. Yeah. And nothing is done within that intervening period. Mm. If nothing is done, the person will complete the cycle. They made cases for effective communication between students and school administrators and the need to expand infrastructure to accommodate the influx of students into schools. In Abuja, Daniel Adiriu, NT News. And Caleb in Jos is next on our lineup. Good afternoon to you, Caleb. Good afternoon and welcome to JAWS. The Nigerian Television Authority has continued to receive commendations for the critical role it plays in upholding peace and strengthening democratic ideals. This time, it's coming from the senator representing Plateau North, Istifanus Gang, when he paid a visit on the management of NTA Network Center JAWS. Zinret Dumun completes the story. Accompanied by stakeholders and some members of his constituency, Senator Gang, who is on familiarization tour to federal institutions within the state, said the aim of the visit is to engage the NTA in his quest for ensuring peace and unity in the state, especially his constituency, which has suffered security challenges in the past. He commended NTA for being at the fore of accountable and transparent reportage. The role of the media, particularly NTA, 
is not only to disseminate information. It's not only to enlighten the public about government programs and happenings in the society, but it is also to ensure that government and other public functionaries are held accountable. And we want to say that you have been playing that role and playing it well. The Zonal Director of the Center, Peter Ochibo, assured the lawmaker of the Center's support in building a peaceful society and appreciated him for being the first lawmaker to identify with NTA network centers. This, he says, will strengthen the democratic process in the state. We always give our impartial and balanced reporting. Whatever news we are covering, we ensure that there is accuracy and there is impartiality and there is balance. With this visit, the Center and the Just North constituency have become strong partners in progress for peace and development in the society. In Joss, Zenred Dumun, NTA News. The slaughtering of animals during Eid al-Kabir is one of the rituals performed by Muslims the world over. This is to seek Allah's blessing as stated in the Holy Quran as Muslims prepare for this year's celebration. Saada to Muhammad Kafa surveys prices of rams in different markets in Jaws. The annual festival by the Muslim community is fast gathering momentum as various ram markets are recording increasing number of customers. Prices of ram ranges from 16 to 120,000 naira in different selling points. However, the prices are higher this year compared to last year. I priced them um, is 30,000, but he didn't sell it. He said that we should buy them on 38. Uh, the price is reasonable. Some of the sellers say the unstable market price is connected to the high sale rates and cost of transportation across the country. Prices are a little bit higher than last year. This is uh, the ram, you have plenty of rams, but let's see. Uh, by this time, Ram already ma would sell it. Meanwhile, Deputy Imam Fiber Mocks Joss, Ustaz Omar Farouk, speaks on the sacrificial animals needed for the sacrifice. The ram that is required is the one that is over a year. That is the age of the ram. Then it shouldn't be, it shouldn't have any deficiency. But in Islam, if we, a family of ten. You can slaughter one cow or one camel for your family because the ram cannot be sufficient for the family. And if you slaughter that ram or slaughter that camel or slaughter that cow, it is expected for you to share it into three. One for your family, one as sarka, one as gift. He re echoed the need for adherence without compulsion to sacrifice as it is meant to please the Almighty Allah. In just, Sa'ada to Muhammad Kafa, ain't a news. The Christian Elders Forum of Northern Nigeria, NOSIF, has donated relief materials to internally displaced persons in Plateau State. The items were delivered at the SEMA warehouse Bukuru for distribution to various IDPs in the state. The report. National Chairman of NOSIF, who was represented, and the state chairman of the forum underscored the role of NOSIF in promoting peaceful coexistence and welfare of persons in the North, devoid of ethnic discrimination. They said the gesture is part of their commitment at ensuring that all persons affected by insurgency, communal clashes, or disasters are supported to live normal lives. Well, we're here to feel the pains of our Christian brothers who have been, been displaced due to either natural or man-made disaster. And that is one of the core reasons why uh, we, got, we got ourselves together and formed NOSEF in 1976. Beneficiaries commended the Elders Forum for identifying with them and prayed for their success. We promise you that this item to use the people, we must respect the donor intention, that the, the people must benefit from these items we have given. The items made up of maize, rice, gari, sugar and fertilizer were presented in the presence of NEMA and SEMA officials who commended the gesture. And that's it from Jules. Hawa is back to you. 
Many thanks, Caleb. And moving on, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the reappointment of Dr. Kashim Yunisa Ako as a Director General National Productivity Center for a second and final term of four years. A press statement signed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, indicates that the reappointment took effect from the 20th of May 2019. And Chineye in Enugu is on standby with more reports on Nationwide. Thank you, Halwa. Good afternoon. Welcome to Enugu. About 109 indigents from Enugu North Senatorial District of Enugu State have benefited from the poverty alleviation program of the federal government. Senator Chuku Kautazi, who distributed the relief materials, stated that the gesture, which is in fulfillment of his campaign promises, will take care of about 500 indigent persons. Comfort IME reports that the event attracted officials of the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission. 109 indigents from two different local government areas, Udenu and Iweze South, out of the six local government areas that make up the senatorial district, converged on the premises of their senator to honor the invitation, which is the kickoff. This is by doing it free. You are want to use it as a poverty alleviation of the federal government. Out of the 109 beneficiaries, 42 persons were from Udenu local government area, 20 received grinding machine, 17 motorcycle, 5 persons smiled home with tricycle. While out of 67 persons from Ibuese South, 4 received tricycle, 33 motorcycle and 30 grinding machines. I have nothing doing. I'm just seeking for a job to do. I gave motorcycle. I'll use it to generate income. I believe it, Kekena Pepe. It uh, signified that I recognize the poor. Handing over the items, he advised the people to make judicious use of the items. He also commended efforts of the federal government towards the constituent project, as well as the state government for giving him a enabling environment to prove his love for his people. The empowerment program is coming for the third time and continues with four other local government areas, Nsoka, Igbeze North, Igbeziti, and Uzuwani local government. In Enugu, Comfort Ayim, NTA News. Ahead of the Idel Kabiri celebrations next week, prices of most livestock in Enugu, especially ram, are on the increase. Amechi Pius tells us more. As Muslim faithful in Enugu make last-minute preparations to celebrate this year's Ide Kabiru, prices of most livestock are still on the increase. Dealers on livestock within the metropolis lamented the increase which they attributed to the prevailing economic situation in the country. It's a financial problem, not uh, the price. You say they have money in their account, they, uh, they should have buy. The price will not uh, scare them out. Last year by now, we have already started selling. The smallest one is 35. The biggest one is 150, 130. But this year, up to now, we didn't sell 100,000 Naira on up to now. The highest one we sell is 80,000 Naira. Depending on its size, the price of ram is between 17,000 and 100,000 Naira. While livestock like goats, which often serves as an alternative during such festive period, sells for between 15 and 60,000 naira, depending on its size. Unlike before, now you can buy something like this, 40 or even 35, but now it's 50,000 naira. The cow market has continued to witness low patronage, a development that has led to a reduction in the price of the livestock. In Enugu, Amechi Pahayos, NTA News. And that is it from Enugu. It's back to Hawa in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Chineye. And a report just in says the National Security Council has ordered the Defense Headquarters to set up to set up an investigative committee which was unraveling the circumstances surrounding the alleged killing of three police officers and one civilian by soldiers in Taraba State. The council gave the directive after an extraordinary meeting on the nation's security situation presided over by President Mohamed Buhari. Sports now. The federal government says everything has been put in place to ensure Nigerian athletes excel at the 2019 African Games in Morocco. 
Olumide Oguntola has these and other reports on Sports Update.